To my explainer tonight, it has been a record increase for fuel prices this month. The cost of the three main fuel products crossing the 200 shilling psychological barrier. Now, there's been much talk in the country about the cost of fuel and the factors that contribute to it. Well, there are both external and internal factors that add to the final price of the pump for consumers. First, of course, is the international cost of fuel products because Kenya does not produce its own oil, neither do we refine it. The other factor, of course, is the exchange rate between the Kenya shilling and the dollar, considering the fuel is purchased in US dollars, and we've seen a great decline in that rate. But how does this work in the region, as we have just seen from that story by Seth Olale? Well, in Kenya, the prices are regulated by the Energy Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Now, if you take a look at Tanzania, where Kenyan motorists are crossing over to buy petrol at a cost of about 193 shillings a litre, their prices, too, are regulated by a body that is known as the Energy and Water Utilities Regulatory Authority. Now, it is an autonomous regulatory authority that sets the cap prices for petroleum prices as mandated by Tanzania. Tanzania's Petroleum Act of 2015, Section 66. Now, they set a cap, but they encourage the oil marketing companies to sell at a price that gives them a competitive advantage as long as they do not exceed the cap or the limit that has been set. Uganda is a different story. There are no price uh, regulations for petroleum products in that country. In fact, it is uh, the market forces that drive the prices. And you'll see uh, just what we're talking about here if we move to the next slide. Now, the market forces drive the prices in Uganda. And there, there has been a push to seek price controls like some other countries in the region. You see, in Rwanda, price regulation is at play as well for fuel products, and it's done by the Rwanda Utility Regulatory Authority. Now, let's move to the next one, and this is what I want to talk about now. Back to Kenya. Let's break down those figures. Now, there are a few components uh, to that final pump price. When the product itself arrives in the country, these are the respective costs for petrol, diesel, and kerosene. That's what you see there as 115, 117, and 123. This is also known as the landed cost. Well, it is from here that the costs begin to add up. Distribution costs, storage costs, including the pipeline costs from Mombasa to Nairobi. There are also other factors to take a look at, such as pipeline losses, depot losses, that range in price depending on the different products. And then you've got delivery within 40 kilometers of Nairobi. Don't forget, you have to have the supplier's margins. That's the oil marketing companies, the ones you and I know as the different companies operating the filling stations. They too must have their profit margins set. And they're at 12 shillings 39 for petrol, 1236 for both diesel and kerosene. Incidentally, by the way, this margin has remained the same since this time back in 2021. Now, all this is data from IPRA. Now, if we move to the next component, this is the one that sends the prices to a whole new level. That is the taxes. There are nine taxes in total that are charged on petroleum products. These are excise duty, road maintenance levy, Petroleum Development Levy, Petroleum Regulatory Levy, Railway Development Levy, Anti-Adulteration Levy, which you'll see on the next slide, Merchant Shipping Levy, Import Declaration Fee, and finally, Value Added Tax. These taxes account for almost 70% of the landed cost. That is the actual cost of the fuel itself. As you can see at the bottom there, 79.31 for petrol and 62 shillings 81 for kerosene. That's the total taxes and levies um, that are charged on fuel products. Now, just to move to the next one, because these are some two important changes that have been effected on some of the taxes. The reduction of the import declaration levy and the railway development levy, both reduced in this year's Finance Act. Though the reduction accounts for a reduction in the price of fuel of no more than two shillings. The other change has been VAT. This is the big one. Now, there's some history here. VAT was not initially charged on fuel products. It was reintroduced in September 2018. This was the result of an IMF facility that we sought back in 2011. It was $688 million, which is about $69 million, um, 690 million Kenya shillings at the time. 
one of the conditions of that facility was that we amend our tax laws and remove some items that were exempt. One of those was petroleum products. And that is what the VAT Act of 2013 did. It proposed to slap VAT on petroleum products. But Parliament decided that it would not apply right away. It gave it a transition period of three years to start taking effect in 2016. The then CS committed to abolishing VAT exemption on oil products back in 2016. But they kept kicking the can down the road until 2018 September. And even then, they put VAT at 8% on petroleum products. Now, if you fast forward to this year's budget, it doubled VAT from 8% to 16%. So of the doubling of VAT alone, is rather significant in terms of adding to the cost of fuel. It means that there has been an addition of 14 shillings 50 for petrol, 13 shillings 86 on diesel, and close to 14 shillings on kerosene just from the doubling of VAT alone. So even though there are some external factors over which we have no control, the taxes, all nine of them, are possibly within Kenya's sphere of influence. You see, taxes are introduced and passed by your representatives in Parliament. So that means that there is influence that can be exerted by both the executive and the legislature if they so wish. That issue of taxes, by the way, on fuel products was even acknowledged by then presidential candidate and now President William Ruto during the presidential debate on the 26th of July, 2022. I think we need to interrogate these 15 different taxes. Which ones can we put aside so that like other countries, we can limit the taxation on, uh, on, on fuel? Take for example VAT. Yes, okay, carry Take for example VAT. Correct. I think we need to rethink taxation, VAT taxation on fuel. That was the latest inclusion of, of taxes on fuel. And, and I think it was very controversial. That's the explainer tonight. Now here's another